Is from Willie, the little woman. Yep, sent me her picture. Mm, quite a hunk of woman. She's awful strong. Funny, I always went for strong women. Where's she now, Willie? North Africa. I'll read you what she says. <clears throat> Darling Willie boy, who'd ever thought when I met you that time on the streetcar that a year later I'd be writing to you from North Africa? She was a motorman in Seattle when I met her. Funny, I got on the car to go see another girl. I thought she shortchanged me, so I told her. She throws me off the car. Right then and there, something happened inside of me. She broke your ribs? No. Love. A week later, we were hitched. Well, I know how hard it is for you at home, dear boy, I left behind me. When I get back, we'll have a little cottage of our own and maybe a couple of little wax running around in it. Don't you write beautiful? Yeah, just like poetry. Yeah. Well, I hope you ain't suffering too much with rationing and no gas and all that, Willie boy. Don't worry about me. I just put two inches on my chest since I started driving a transport truck. Gosh, how I love that sergeant. Sanford wants to see you in the office. Yeah, what's he want? I don't know. He's on a rampage today. You better step on it. I guess this is it, Willie. He hasn't spoken to me since that fire. Well, I got one rule how to get ahead in the forestry service. What's that? Never punch your supervisor in the nose.
I've been avoiding you since that incident in Bucksaw Canyon, Bradley. Yes, sir. I know how the service feels about unnecessary risks. But I've been taking care of Susie and Joe ever since they were brought here. And I felt that I just it's had a little to... late to apologize now, Bradley. Yes, sir. I've waited this long to talk to you because, well, I was waiting for this. It just came from Washington. It's something I asked for a month ago. Your promotion. My, my promotion? From now on, you'll be in charge of the Dark Mountain District. In charge? Oh, that's great. Willie Dinsmeyer goes along as your assistant, if that'll be satisfactory. Satisfactory? Sure, Willie will be swell. Oh, something else. A week's furlough before you take over your new position. A furlough? Well, I, I'm just stumped. It sounds like the furlough is more important than the promotion. Oh, no, sir. Well, that is, well, I've been waiting for a promotion for a long time, for a very special reason. And a furlough works out perfect. You have plans? Well, I don't mind telling you, sir. When I go up to Dark Mountain, I'll be taking along a wife. That is, I uh, hope so. Well, congratulations are in order. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, I, I think so. You see, I haven't quite told her yet. Well, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and tell her, and good luck. Thank you, sir. <laughs> good evening, lady. Could I interest you in a subscription to Girls Life magazine? Duh. I'm so glad to see you. What did you get in the town? Came right here from the depot. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? <laughs> oh, of course. Come in. <laughs> you didn't mention a furlough in your last letter. Did I mention a promotion? A promotion? Yep. Supervisor of the Dark Mountain District. Oh, Don, that's swell. Do I have to salute you now, or is a handshake permissible? You know, the minute I got the news, I told my boss I was coming right down here and proposed to the most beautiful girl in the world. And I wasn't exaggerating either. Don, before you say anything... Now, don't stop me, Katie. I've been rehearsing this speech all the way in. If you stop me now, I'll, I'll forget all the words. Don, I didn't know you were that serious about it. Yes, I know, Katie. We've been friends a long time, and I've never given out much with a romantic talk. But all the time I was up there in the woods, I kept thinking about you. I worked hard, and I studied just to get that promotion. I know you did, Don. And you know why I wanted it so badly. Because of you, Kay. Because when I got it, then I could ask you to marry me. We have been awfully good friends. Don, I don't quite know how to say this. You have to understand. Hey, darling, did you see my pearl cufflinks? Oh, hello. Steve, I want you to meet Don Bradley. I told you about him. Steve Downey, my husband. Well, the forest stranger. I'm glad to know you. How do you do? Don got an unexpected furlough. He surprised me. <laughs> no more than you surprised me. Oh, you mean me. <laughs> well, it was rather sudden. But that's the way I do things, isn't it, baby? You got yourself quite a gal there, mister. Well, I can't disagree with you there, Ranger. Say, I hope you'll excuse me. I have to get dressed. Formal dinner, business associates. I'm late now. Well, that's all right. I'll be leaving in a minute. Oh, no. Stick around and talk to Kay. Say, if you're going to be in town, let's get together tomorrow night. No, I think I'll be busy. Well, the next night, then. You arrange it, Kay. Say, have you seen my... Huh? In the left-hand dresser, Joe. Oh, thanks. Well, I'll be seeing you, Bradley. Make a date with him, Kay. I was going to write you. Well, I guess you can't expect a girl to wait around forever. Seems like quite a guy. He is. Way out of my class, I can see that. No, I hope you're very happy. Thanks. How about dinner Friday night? Nope, I think I'll go back up to the mountains and get an early start on the new job. Then you won't change your mind and spend some time with us? Kay, if anything ever goes wrong... I know, Don. I always could count on you. You bet. Goodbye. Bye. Nice guy. Yes, Steve, he is. <laughs> I wonder if I could be that nice if he'd stolen my girl. <laughs> I 
I'm going. You stick till the truck comes. Steve, you ought to be here to check them in. You handle it this time. My wife has her yokel relatives in town. We're having dinner at the band box. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Here they come. Huh? Oh. And remember, Harvey, no smoking. Aunt Patty, Uncle Sam, you look wonderful. You look mighty pert yourself, Kay. Marriage is good for you. Thanks, Annie. Alisa, Harvey, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Could ought have found it, too, haven't you, Kay? Oh, I don't know. Now, don't mind me. I'm just a husband. <laughs> oh, Steve, I'm sorry. This is Aunt Patty, Uncle Sam, right, and Cousin Alisa. Delighted. Sit down, yes, sit down. Yes, please. I'm sorry we're late. Hmm? Bates, Harvey Bates, Alita's husband. Oh, I'm sorry, Harvey. Didn't I introduce you? Well, I'm glad to know you, Harvey. Yeah. Would you like to order now, Mr. Downey? Oh, I think we should have something to drink first. What'll it be? Oh, I could use a nice cold sarsaparilla myself. Sarsaparilla? Uh-huh. Well, suit yourself, Harvey, but this is kind of a celebration. Meeting Kay's folks for the first time calls for champagne. Champagne? Uh, your best to hear a magnet. Very good, sir. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Well, we don't get down to town often. Granville's over 100 miles from here. I come down to do some buying. Oh, yes. General store, isn't it? Yeah, little of this, little of that. How's business? Well, I can sell anything I can buy, but I can't buy much these days. <laughs> <laughs> Cigarette? Uh, do you like cork tips? Oh, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Harvey, remember your asthma. You know, I wish I could locate some radio tubes. Half the radios up in the valley are out of whack. I promised to bring back some tubes. Well, I think I can get you some. You can? Mother. He thinks he can get us some tubes. He can. Our customers ain't the same when they can't listen to Bob Hope. <laughs> Where can you get them? Well, if you have the right connections, you can get anything. Well, ain't that the truth? Kay, whatever happened to that Don Bradley from up home, the forest ranger fella? Oh, he's supervisor of the Dark Mountain District now. I always thought he was kind of sweet on you. <laughs> well, he was, but I had more sugar stamps. <laughs> Would you like to dance? Me? Oh. Thank you. Smart fellow you got there, Kate. What business he in? We'll sell merchandise. And doing mighty well at it, too. I can see that. I think you made a hit with him. That Harvey, there's a talkative character. Lisa does the talking for the two of them. Steve. Oh, hello, Whitey. You looking for me? Yeah. The truck just pulled in. It was hijacked. Shut up. What is it, Steve? Oh, nothing. Whitey's always shooting off his mouth. Yeah, but boss, you... Excuse me, honey. Will you take care of the folks? I think Whitey needs a drink. I ought to brain you. The wife, ain't she happy? No, she's not. Now, what's this about the shipment? Phil and Jerry just pulled in with an empty truck. What happened to the furs? Hijacked just across the state line. Well, who pulled it? We're waiting for you at the warehouse. Go on, I'll meet you outside. Must have closed a fortune. I'm sorry, folks, but I'll have to break away. Some business associates just got in town. Steve, at this time of night... I'm checking out in the morning, Kay. I'm sorry. Say, will you pay the check? Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you soon. Run up to Rando sometime. Thanks, I will. I'll see you at home, Kay. Good night. Good night. Sharp fella, Kay. Yes. Oh, are you still up? I've been waiting for you, Steve. Why didn't you tell me what your business really is? Well, darling, I told Don't you. Don't lie, Steve. Several things have made me wonder. 
And tonight, Whitey said... Oh, he gets excited about every little thing. I'm not that stupid. That merchandising business is nothing but a blind for stolen goods. One of your trucks was hijacked tonight. Well? Why didn't you call the police? Because it's none of their business. Now, look, darling, you know I couldn't buy you those clothes and those diamonds if I were some two-bit shoe clerk. I'm smart, and I get what I want. Not always, Steve. Hey. Where do you want it? Well, I get the door closed. Morning, boss. How's it, Whitey? Over by the office, hon. Customer waiting to see you. What? He told you never to let anybody in here we didn't know. He's okay, boss. He's got a letter from Dutch Heiser. Oh, Dutch Heiser, huh? All right. Are you Steve Downing? Check. I'm Dave Lewis, the Emporium up at Five Points. Glad to know you. Got a letter for you from Dutch Heiser. A good friend of mine said you could fix me up. Ah, sweet setup you've got here. What's your interest? Silk yardage. Oh, silk, huh? Yeah, Dutch Heiser wrote that... Uh, I'm afraid perhaps... you made a little mistake, Mr. Lewis. What? Dutch Heiser can't write English. I guess I did make a mistake. Now, what's the phony front? Oh. Copper, huh? The city's being flooded with stolen merchandise, Downey. Especially textiles. So I hear. And you have quite a large stock of textiles over there. I bought them. Then you perhaps could explain to the DA where and how much you paid for them. You know, a man like you probably has a nice wife and family. That's right. A city job would pay about 70 or 80 dollars a week. 65. Oh. Take a long time to save a thousand dollars. Living costs being what they are. Mm. Oh, nice wallet. Alligator skin. My wife gave me one for Christmas. Mm. Shall we take a walk, Mr. Downey? I'm not in the mood for walking. It's only four blocks at the courthouse. You know, a man like you could have an accident. Get that case off and back that truck up. Mr. Lewis is going to have an accident on the highway tonight. Hit and run driver. You have a nice day? Say, what's all this? I'm leaving. Oh, come on, Kay. Forget all that, will you? I'll ask you just once more. I can't give it up, Kay. What's more, I don't want to. Then there's nothing more to discuss. Well, you're not leaving. Let go of me. You love me. You married me. What kind of a dame are you? You lied to me. You think I'm sucker enough to let you walk out? So that's it. Your pride. No, Kay. I'm crazy about you. But you won't do anything to hold me. Well, what do you want me to be? Honest. A broken down sap, that's what you mean. Now listen, honey, relax. I'll give you anything you want. And when you're on top, nobody asks you where you get it. I can't live that way. Well, I'm not going to let you go. Let's see who it is. I told you never to come here. Steve, they got hunk. It's curtains. Stop sputtering. Who got hunk? The coppers. We went through a red light. Of all the crazy tricks. It was a tough break. We had the stiff with us. Shut up! It's curtains. They got hunk. You'll sing. Where have they got him? I don't know. I lamb. The DA's office, I guess. If they make him spill, it's, it's the works. We may have to make a quick trip. Pack me a bag. I'll be back here in a half an hour. What are you going to do? Never mind what I'm going to do. You start packing.
stay here. I won't let you do it. Keep it quiet. Let's get moving. Steve! Get me out of here! If they sweat me, I'll squeal, so I hope me I'll rap! Darling, here's where you and I part company for the time being. You won't get very far. Don't worry, I've got it figured out. Now, you take the car. Find some place you can hide out for a couple of weeks from the trail school, then get in touch with me. Now, remember this. Joseph Johnson, care of General Delivery, New Orleans. I'm not running away. I haven't done anything. Tell that to the cops. What do you mean? You're tied up with everything I've done. Your signature's on the lease to the warehouse, remember? You're on the spot back there tonight. How far do you think an innocent plea will get you? I don't believe you. Okay. It's a murder rap. Life in prison wouldn't be very nice for a girl like you. What do you want me to do? What I told you. Lay low and about a month write to me. And another town, a new name, our whole life ahead of us. Remember this, Kay. I love you. And wherever you are, I'll come and get you. All right. Get going. Don't worry about the license plates. They're phony. Lookout for Downey and his wife, Kay, 23, attractive, brown hair, 5 feet 5, approach with caution, Downey considered dangerous. have you been teaching that dog? Four years? And he won't even shake hands with you yet. He's just particular who he shakes with. Yeah, then how come he won't get your yarn for you? You make him self-conscious. He doesn't want to show off in front of you. Willie, how many cases of dynamite do we haul up here? Well, how many? How many times have I told... Six. Cases of dynamite. Stand up, will you? Yeah, I feel like a sir. You mean to tell me your sergeant is that big? Yeah, that's about it. Hey, when's Joe and Ben going to relieve us up here? Thursday. Oh, I'll have it finished by then. She'll love it. You know, those nights in Africa are pretty cold. Hello? Huh? Yeah, just a minute. Hey, a chick for a uh, girl for you. What will I tell her? Bradley speaking. Don. Don, is that you? Who is this? Kay. Yes. Is something wrong? I'm on duty here at the lookout station. Please, can't you get away just for an hour? I've got to see you. Where are you? Briar Lake? At the service station. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Hey, wait a minute. Who's going to take care of the station here? You. Watch me. This is what I want you to do. Here, look.
Maybe I should have stayed. Maybe I should go to prison. I don't know. Everything's so mixed up. I know I shouldn't have come here, but you said if anything ever happened. That's right. I'm glad you're here. I'm frightened, Doc. I don't want them to find me. Not yet, anyway. Maybe... Maybe when I get over the shop, maybe I can face them, but... Now I've got to hide. Hide? Let me think. Yeah, that's got it. What? Up near the peak, there's a cabin. The folks who own it never use it this time of year. You'll be perfectly safe there. Thanks. How do I get there? Just follow me. It's about a mile across from the lookout station. The road's straight up and, and narrow, so take it easy, honey. Let them find me. I now take it easy. You're safe. Don't try to get up unless you feel like it. I'll make it. Well, this is all there is. Just this room and the bedroom in there. It's fine. I hate to leave you here alone, but I've got to get back. I've kept you here long enough as it is. Well, you'll need some food. I'll bring some back. No, not tonight. I'm not hungry. Okay, first thing in the morning. If you need any blankets, you'll find them in the bedroom. I'll be quite comfortable. Yeah, I better leave you this. Oh. You can use it to call if you need me. Just step outside, point straight up, and fire twice. I'll come around. Fire twice. I'll remember. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Don. Yeah? You know how grateful I am. Maybe someday I can repay you. Look, Kay, you're here where I can see you and talk to you and take care of you. I don't have to be repaid for that. you asleep? No, we're restless. Don. Yeah? That lady that called. Well? Uh, was that Kay Downey you told me about? What about it? We were listening to the radio and... Well, what'd you hear? Come on, give out, give out. She's in trouble. Yeah, I know. Her husband's wanted by the police. He knocked off a couple of guys. He what? He killed two guys, that's all. The police want him dead or alive. She didn't tell me that. Yeah. It's a good thing you didn't marry her. Imagine you being married to the wife of... What am I saying? If you was married to her, she wouldn't be the wife of... Well, anyway, it's none of our business. That's what you think. Huh? I'm hiding her out in a cabin up on the cliff. Oh, well, that's a very good place to... <clears throat> uh, wait a minute, you can't do that. Why, she's a fugitive from... Well, she's a fugitive. You know what that would mean to you if anybody found out? She hasn't done anything. There's no reason for them to hound her. Don't get mixed up in it. We're already mixed up in it. We? 
What do you mean, we? I don't even know the dame. Oh, go to sleep. Let me think, will you? I've got to work this thing out. Don, you're still in love with her, aren't you? Go on, go to sleep, will you? You know, Luther, love's a wonderful thing. What are you doing here? Aren't you glad to see me, baby? How did you know I was here? Now, wait a minute. You didn't believe that line about us splitting up, did you? I knew you'd head for here and use that ranger for a chump. You married yourself a guy with brains, Kay. I knew he wouldn't hide me out, so I figured you'd get yourself set, then baby would walk in. You got to leave here. <laughs> you know, honey, you're much prettier when you're angry. You're gonna leave here. I won't let Come on, you... give me that. Drop it, I don't want to hurt you. It's a fine way to greet your husband with a gun. I was going to call for help. Oh. <laughs> the ranger, fire two shots, I suppose. It's an old gag, forget it. You're going to hide me here till the heat's off. Now, come on, be a good girl. Don't. Well, all right. For now, you're upset that you're my wife. And when I'm ready to leave, we leave together. No, Steve. It may take you a couple of days, but you'll see it my way. I'm crazy about you, Kay, but get this straight. You give me away to the boyfriend, and I'll kill you both. Let the pigeon in and watch yourself. Groceries. Good morning, lady. Any vitamins today? Well, get these things out of the way and you can whip up some breakfast. Here's some fresh hen food. It's not food for weeks. Well, take it easy. Eggs are scarce up here. Sorry to be so clumsy. Okay, you're shaking. What's the matter? No, I'm not. You're just imagining things. Oh, right. Well, they'll never find you unless you want them to. Good reception for a battery set. I hate to deprive you of it. Well, we've got another one over the post. If you get tired of the soap operas, you can tune in on shortwave. Just press this button. Police are still searching for Steve Downey and his wife, who disappeared yesterday amid circumstances which point to their indictment for the fatal shooting of two of his... I'm keeping you from your work. Well, no hurry. I'm just dynamiting stumps out of a fire break. I brought you another blanket. That other one probably scratched the hide off of you. Oh, don't go in there. What? Uh, I'll take care of it. No trouble. I'll just toss it on the bed. Well, please, I... I didn't get a chance to straighten up before you came. Afraid I'll be shocked by your housekeeping? 
I wouldn't want to disillusion you. about keeping you from your... Well, you don't have to fix my breakfast. Our breakfast, you mean? I haven't had anything but a stack of wheat cakes. Don, I can fry eggs. I'm the best egg man in these year parts. The secret is shaking them so they get plenty of hot butter. See? And so he says, Don, you know what I'm going to do? And I said, what, go to Africa to keep her warm? And he says, no, I'm going to knit her a sweater. And would you believe it? He's been doing that ever since. Well, I'll wash these and be on my way. Are you trying to make me feel completely useless? No, I'm just making excuses to stick around. I guess you know that. <laughs> You'd better go to work. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Think you can manage to live? No, but I will. Goodbye. Bye. I thought that gilpin would talk your ear off. I says this to him, and he says that to me. What a dope. Well, he's gone now. Fix me some chow, will you, honey? Things are working out just the way I figured, if we can keep that square head from getting wise. It's coming back. Ditch the eggs. Okay. Did you forget something? I found this outside. What is it? A half-smoked cigarette. You know, you want to be more careful where you throw these. Oh, oh, yes. One snipe like that can start the whole mountain blazing. The woods are pretty dry, you know. I'm sorry, Don. I'll try to be more careful. When did you start smoking cork tips? Oh, I, I picked them up somewhere. Oh, I'm uh, fresh out. Have you got a cigarette? Y yes, of course. I guess I'm fresh out myself. Well, that's all right. I'll bring some tomorrow. Thanks. See you then. What did he want? You heard. Watch those cigarettes. That guy's too dumb to come in out of the rain. A couple more days and our trail will be as cold as an iceberg. Then we can scram. That eternal pacing. This place is driving me nuts. Cooped up, nothing to do. Like a prison? What? You didn't have to come here. Never mind. I figured it out right. A couple more days, that's all. Coffee? Coffee, coffee, coffee. My nerves are like wires already. I'm gonna miss these little twosomes when you're gone. You'll be leaving pretty soon, won't you? A day or two. You've made up your mind? You know, you always were a good cook. Remember when we were kids up at your Uncle Sam's? You made the strawberry shortcake? Yeah. And I got the strawberry rash. You said I got it on purpose just to make fun of your baking. Say, I'd better bring in some more groceries. Oh, there'll be plenty. The amount of food you put away, it's, it's phenomenal. It must be the mountain air. 
Yeah, it must be. You're eating enough for two people. Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to the post. You know, Willie's getting jealous of you. I'd like to meet Willie. He sounds nice. I'll try to arrange it. One of us has to stay at the post all the time. Bye. Goodbye. There it is, Luther. Ain't it the cats? <coughs> uh, uh, oh, well, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have said that, huh? Oh, she'll sure be warm nights in this. You know, I wish I was the sweater. Oh, hiya, Donzi. <laughs> I got her finished. Good, it's about time. I'm glad you got back. Let's play some checkers. Not right now, Willie. I gotta work something out. Oh, every time you see that girl, you come back here looking like a wet blanket. Come on, checkers will relax you. No, thanks, Willie. Okay, then. I had my hand on it all the time. He's on your side. Does it? Who won? Who do you think? Here. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Please try it on. I can't send it if, it if it don't fit right. All right. This is positively the last time. Cross my heart. Oh, that's... A little tight. Yes. Willie, what would you say if I told you I thought... Her husband was up at that cabin with her. I'm her husband. How could I be up at the... It's been bothering me for days. Little things. Oh, you're just jealous. I found a cork tip cigarette. She doesn't smoke them. And she's used more food than she could possibly eat herself. Gee, if she's hiding him. Yeah, I wonder. Well, then she's still in love with him and she's been using you for a chump. No, Willie, I, I don't think she'd do that. Oh, boy, if he's there, I'd hate to be in your spot. He's a killer. Look, why don't you come right out and ask her? If he's there and she's shielding him, she won't tell me. And if he's not, well, I wouldn't want to put her on the spot. If there was only some way we could get him to come out in the open. Uh, don't get me mixed up in it. Well, it's a cinch your whack will never get into this. Something's wrong. You know, I got all the measurements.
What's that? Only the wind, Steve. That eternal blasting. What does he think this is, the 4th of July? It's his job. Oh, why don't he cut it out? Why are you staring at me? You think I'm losing my grip? Well, I'm not, see? You've got more brains in my foot than a dozen coppers. They're never gonna take me. We're getting out of here and safe. Why don't you leave then? Well, I will when the time's right, believe me. Sorry I can't stay for dinner tonight, but my state supervisor's coming up and I'll have to make out a report. Your supervisor? Is he staying? No, he's going right back. He's sending up our relief to the lookout station tomorrow. Then you'll be leaving. Kay, I'm worried about you. I've made up my mind, Don. I'm going to face it and take my chances. You know, if there's anything I can do, to get some rain. We need it. You know, there's an old legend about the thunder up here. It seems that when the first Indians settled here, all was peace and plenty. And then another tribe heard about the place and tried to, uh, uh, what do the racketeers call it? Racketeers? Well, they tried to muscle in. Well, this blitzkrieg might have worked, but the local medicine man started praying to their tribal god. And he answered? Just like that. It all started with a terrific clap of thunder. Just about like that. And then the first lightning bolt struck the enemy chief. Ever since then, whenever there's thunder up here, someone on Dark Mountain is doomed to die. At least that's what they say. Nice bedtime story. Well, the old timers here claim it never misses. But we don't have to worry. We're not Indians or racketeers. No. No, of course not. What's the matter? Your supervisor do? Oh, I've got a program I'd like to hear at six. Hillbillies, you like them? Well, some of them. Kate, if I don't see you again, I want you to know this has been swell having you up here. Even for a little while. I realize what a terrible mistake it was. Last month when... I hurt you and I hurt myself. If it weren't too late... It's not too late. Six o'clock down. You're hillbillies. Oh, yeah. You like these boys. They're from way down in Arkansas. I turned on the short wave by mistake. Well, let's hear it. Concentrate on all highways leading out of southern part of the state. Downey has been traced to Ferndale. And is believed headed for the Mexican border. Watch southern roads for a dark gray convertible coupe. Downey is 5 feet 10, broad shouldered, light complexion, curly hair. May be accompanied by his wife, Kay Downey. 5 feet 3, attractive, brown hair. Approach with caution. That is all. If he gets over the southern border... Don, I've got to tell you... What? Nothing. Well, I... Uh, I guess I'd better get back to the post. I've got a truckload of dynamite out there, and I'd hate to drive home on slick roads. It's liable to start raining any minute. Don, if I don't see you... Well, I'll be up to town pretty soon. Goodbye, and don't be afraid. Bye. What was all that jabbering about thunder and Indians? Oh, it was just... You don't believe that, Bunk. 
That every time it thunders up here, somebody dies. Do you? No. No, of course not. Okay, get your things together. We're leaving. Leaving? Right now. You heard the radio, didn't you? They're following a false trail down south. I told you I'd outsmart them. We go north. Now go on, get started. I'm not going. I told you we're leaving together. I'm not leaving, Steve. You've fallen for him, is that it? You're hurting my arm. You haven't squealed to him, have you? No, you wouldn't dare. <laughs> I'll make his thunder story come true. Steve! He's in love with you. He'll come running if you're in trouble, won't he? <laughs> Fire two shots. That's the signal, isn't it? I will just wait for it. Take care of you, Ranger, then we're leaving. No, you won't. You plug down, I'll plug you, Downey. All right, smart boy, go ahead. And I'll let Kay have it. Take it easy, Willie. So long, Rangers. Yep, all set. Are you ready? This is my wardrobe. Hey, come on! I thought I told you to wait out in the car. You did. Well, she'll be on her way. Come on, Walter.